Okay, let's get started with Lesson 306, Parallel Lines and Transversals, Part 2. In this lesson, we're going to use properties of parallel lines and transversals to solve problems and prove theorems. Uh, the first three theorems that we're going to be looking at today are the Alternate Interior Angles Theorem, this says if two parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. And we're going to be going over this quite a bit, so y'all are going to get used to all this. Uh, theorem 3.2, alternate exterior angles theorem. If two parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, then the alternate exterior angles are congruent. And then theorem 3.3, same side interior angles theorem. It says if two parallel lines are intersected by a transversal, then the same side interior angles are supplementary. And again, when we're working through examples and you're doing problems for quizzes, tests, problem sets, never assume that side lengths and angles are drawn to scale. Only information that is explicitly given or marked can be assumed. Okay, in this example it says name four pairs, getting my pen ready here, oh, got to get a different color ink, that'll show up, I thought I had already done all this work, it says name four pairs of vertical angles for part A. So, I'm going to write here part A, oops, okay, so vertical angles, um, let's look at this top section right up here. Okay, one, two, three, and four. We know that angle one and angle three are vertical. We know that angle two and angle four are vertical. And then down in the bottom section, we know we have angle eight and angle 6, angle 7, and angle 5. Those are all my vertical angle pairs. Now part B says name all angles that form a linear pair with angle 7. So there's going to be two of those for linear pairs. I'm going to write that out here so we'll remember linear pair is angle 7 and angle 6, angle 7 and angle 8. Part C says name all angles that are congruent to angle 1. So I'm just going to make me a note here, congruent to angle 1. Alright, remember we have alternate interior is going to be congruent. So that is going to be alternate interior. Remember alternate is opposite side of transversal. Oh, interior is not going to work because angle one is exterior. So let me change that to an E. Well, let me just change the whole thing. May as well make it make sense. Back to pen. Alternate exterior. So here's angle one. So opposite side and outside. Because remember exterior means outside. So that's going to be angle six. Now a vertical angle is going to be congruent which is going to be angle 3. Let me see. Oh, corresponding angle, which is going to be angle 8. Remember, corresponding means same position, different table. Okay. Let me see. What else is congruent? Oh, we covered them all. There's going to be four angles that are congruent to angle 1. Okay, let's look at this. D, name all angles that are congruent to angle 4. 
There again, I've got a vertical angle, which is angle two. I got a, oh, four is outside the line, so I'm looking for an alternate exterior angle, which is angle eight. I need to put the angle symbol right there. And then I have corresponding angle, which is going to be angle 5. And let me see something. Let me get the highlighter going here. So I've got angle 4 is congruent to angle 2 because it's vertical, congruent to angle 5 because it's corresponding, and oh, I wrote I wrote down 8 down there instead of 7. And uh, co congruent to angle 7 because it's alternate exterior. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I just erased everything that was up there so far. I'm glad this is being recorded so you can see that. Okay, let's go back up here. Part E says, I was wondering what I was going to do when I ran out of room anyway. Name all angles that are supplementary to angle 3. So I'm going to write here sup to angle 3. So if I'm thinking of them being supplementary, that means that they're going to add up to 180. So angle 2 is linear with angle 3, so it'll add up to 180. And remember, same side interiors, those are supplementary. So that'll add up to 180. And um, I'm trying to look here, make sure angle three and angle eight are, oh, angle four. That will add up to 180. And so will angle seven. I'm making sure that none of the other angles will work. Nope, they won't. So let me come back down here and let's write all this down and I won't erase all the ink on the slide. Okay, so angle two plus angle three will equal 180 and linear pair angle five, that's funny looking five, and angle three will equal 180 because they're same side interior and then because of the transitive property we know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 7 therefore angle 7 plus angle 3 is going to equal 180 and again we know that angle 5 is congruent to angle 4, therefore angle 5 plus angle 3 is going to equal 180 as well. And then we do the same thing for angle 2. supplementary to angle 2 and let me change my highlighter color whoops let me use that as pink so oh look at me I highlighted angle 2 as supplementary to 3 Oh, okay, I did, I did include it in my explanations. Okay. So if I look at everybody that's supplementary to angle two, there we go. Those guys are supplementary. Those guys are supplementary. Angle two, angle seven, angle five. All right, I hope I got all that correct. I feel like I missed something. 
Maybe somebody will k-mail me and let me know what I missed. Okay, again, angle two and angle three are a linear pair. Angle two, oh, angle, oh, I know what I missed out here. Angle four and angle three are linear pair. I knew I was missing something. Okay, so angle two and angle one, linear pair. And then, because we know angle one is congruent to angle eight, therefore angle two and angle eight equal 180 and because we know that angle 3 is congruent to angle 6 therefore we know angle 2 plus angle 6 is going to equal 180. So there's all your angles that are supplementary to angle 2. Whew, that took a second. Alright, in this figure it says the measure of angle 7 equals 100, find the measure of each angle. And remember, these are the ones that I like because they're just a big puzzle. So you like to write on here, angle 7 is 100. Remember these arrows right here tell me that um, all these lines are parallel and then M is going to be my transversal. Writing transversal down here. So that means that all the angles that correspond with angle 7 are going to also be 100 degrees because they're congruent. So that would be angle 11 is corresponding and angle 3 is corresponding. Now if you look here, angle 7 and angle 8 are a linear pair, so that means angle 8 is 80 degrees. Angle 6 is vertical from angle 8, so it's 80 degrees. And 7 is vertical from 5, so that makes angle 5 100 degrees. Okay, so all of your angles that are corresponding, let's say, to angle 6 are going to be 80 degrees. All of your angles that correspond with angle 5 will be 100 degrees. Notice that 1 and 3 are also vertical, and so are 9 and 11. And then we can fill in 4 and 12 just because 4 and 2 are vertical. So 4 is 80. 12 and 10 are vertical angles. So 12 is 80. Now, you may be asked to do something like that in a problem set, but they want you to justify it. So you just tell them what kind of angle pair it is, and that is justification. All right. And, you know, it never fails. you got to throw in some X. You always got to find X somewhere. So right here, this figure tells us that these lines are parallel. These two arrows tell us these two lines are parallel. Now why that helps us is it lets us know that this angle that's 8X minus 10 is going to be congruent to the angle that is labeled with 7X. So remember, if angles are congruent, and let's call this, well, they don't really have names. Let's just say, um, the measure, and since we don't have names for them, I'm just going to put that, is equal to the measure with the angle 7x. And then, although this isn't really substitution, but that's what we're doing. So we're solving for x. So now we've just got to get all our x's on one side and all of our constants on one side of the equal sign. So I, move, I like to keep my variables positive, so I'm moving 7x over. 8 minus 7 leaves me x. Now 7 minus 7x minus 7x is going to give me 0, so I'm putting a 0 there. 
Now I've got to add 10 to both sides. So I get x equals 10. So that means this angle, we're going to have 7 times 10, which equals 70 degrees. And then up here we've got 8 times 10 minus 10. 8 times 10 is 80, minus 10 is 70, which works out because those angles are supposed to be congruent. Now, uh, now we've had to solve for y. Now we know that this uh, angle was 7x degrees, we know it equals 70 degrees. So we can say that 6y plus 20, and notice that these angle, this ang these pair of angles right here is a linear pair. So I'm going to say plus 70 equals 180. And I will tell you with parallel lines, they are either congruent or they add up to 180 all the time. You just have to remember your postulates to know who is who. 20 plus 70 gives me 90. I'm going to subtract 90 from both sides. Whoa, bad, bad straight line. 180 minus 90 gives me 90. So I divide both sides by 6. And I get y equals, you'll have to pardon me, I don't have that memorized. Gives me 15. So I can find out that the measure of the angle, that angle, is 6, and it, and it better equal 110, times 15 plus 20. So that's 90 plus 20 gives me 110 degrees. So don't let the algebra stuff scare you or when they throw in more than one variable. Just remember your postulates, who's congruent to who, who adds up to 180. This was a problem I had in the lesson 305 and I decided to move it. Um, they're telling me up here that ED is parallel to AB. These two angles are congruent to each other. Angle A is 44, angle ABE is 22. So if I, I I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, okay, this angle is congruent to this angle. Angle A is 44 degrees. ABE is 22, which is this angle right here. And ACB is 92. Well, first, I'm just going to start solving for these angles. I'm not going to worry about who I'm doing first, A, B, C, D, or E, F because this is a puzzle and that's the way I'm going to work it. For the angle, let me come up here and I'm going to switch to highlighter mode. This angle, this triangle right here, this is an isosceles triangle. That means that two sides are congruent and the base angles are congruent. So what we're going to do here is we know that the sum of angles in a triangle equal 180. So if I say 180 minus 92 I think I'm going to get 88. I'm not sure. I'm double checking. Yeah, 88. And then you take 88 and you divide by 2, you're going to get 44. So each of these angles right here is 44 degrees. Now this angle right here is a linear pair with that 44 degree angle. So I'm going to put right here, I'm going to say I'm looking to see how they wrote it out. I guess they didn't. Okay, I'm just going to say angle E, 
DC plus angle EDB equal 180 degrees. So EDC is 44. I'm going to put an X there so I don't write that out again. So I subtract both sides, I mean 44 from both sides, and I get 136. So this angle right here, 136 degrees. Okay, now then, the lines were parallel. Remember they told us that. This line is parallel to this line. So if I take 22, it is, I mean the angle ABA, ABE, ABE, is that how they call it? Yeah, ABE. This angle right here, I'm putting two arcs, is going to be congruent to BED. And the reason is, is they're um, alternate exterior angles. So let me write that down here. I'm going to say angle BED is congruent to angle ABE because they are alternate. Oh, I said exterior, it's interior. Remember, inside, outside. So there you go. So that means this angle is 22 degrees. Now if I want to find out what angle uh, DBE is, I gotta go back to my little triangle idea. Let me change my colors here. This right here is a triangle. And I know that the sum of their angles is going to be 180. So you've got the measure of angle BED plus the measure of BDE Got to make sure I'm getting all my angles in here. Plus the measure of DBE equals 180. We know that BED is 22. BDE is 136. We don't know DBE. That's what we're trying to find out equals 180. So you add together 136 plus 22 and then you subtract that from 180 and you get 22 degrees. So this came out to be 158 and then X is going to equal 22. So this angle right here is 22 degrees. Whew, one more angle. We're going to look at this one right here. Now angle uh, AEB, if you look, the line CEA, or line CE, segment CE, anyway, that's all 180 degrees. So these three angles right here are going to add up to 180 degrees. So you can take 180 minus 44 minus 22 and that'll tell you the measure of that angle which is 114 now we can answer our questions CED 44 degrees EDB 136 AEB 114, CDE is 44, BED is 22, CBE is also 22.
Okay, to summarize this lesson, um, using corresponding angles postulate and other postulates, theorems, and definitions that you've already learned, we were able to prove the alternate interior angles theorem, alternate exterior angles theorem, and the same side interior angles theorem. Now all of that is in your LMS. I didn't go over it in the lesson. There, uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to have a proof on your Unit 3 Part 2 test and I will be going over proofs um, in the next lessons. Um, the next thing is you were able to find all the angles formed when two parallel lines were cut by a transversal by knowing the measure of only uh, one or two angles and by using theorems, postulates, and definitions. And that's what we did in our uh, examples today. After you get finished watching this video, you should be going through and reading the LMS and completing the student guide, reading pages 69 through 74 in the reference guide, and then completing problems 5 through 13 and 16. When you get finished with those problems, if you have any questions, please uh, attend TOGA or contact me before you complete quiz 3.06. And that's the end of this lesson, and thank you for listening.